I'm going to call the meeting of governance, organization, and legislation to order. It is 1140, excuse me, 1044. And uh, we are being recorded by Amherst Media. And everyone is present and ready to go. Just a quick uh, comment about agenda. I've invited the Chair of Finance, Andy Steinberg, to be with us this morning when we do the review of the finance charge. He's tied up at the moment, so I thought we would uh, proceed to item number two. Um, and then I would like to then deal with the finance charge and then JCPC and BCG charges. Um, so we get, try to get those out of the way, hopefully in a fairly quickly as, as we can. And then turn to uh, councillor comments and talk a bit about the restructuring process. And then uh, turn to public ways requests, item number six. And if there is public comment, and um, since we just had a council meeting and we've had a number of things uh, given to us, uh, including by a number of bylaws, I'd like to spend a few minutes, hopefully before we're done, talking about that. So under item 10, that's what I would like to uh, spend some time on. So um, can we start then with item number two? And I'm going to ask Mandy to uh, take the lead on this. Um, she is one of the two sponsors. This is a proclamation. Um, regarding the League of Women Voters. You have it in your packet. And we just need to review it for uh, clarity, consistency, and actionability. So maybe if you'd be willing to take us through that. Yep, so um, Adrian Terezi wrote to myself and Lynn um, asking that there be a proclamation celebrating the 100th anniversary of the main League of Women Voters, not the one of Amherst. Um, we did that one last year, celebrating their 80th anniversary. And so I took her wording, um, said I'd be willing to sponsor it, mm -hmm. um, along with Lynn, and, um, and took the wording, modified it a little bit, added some stuff. I believe that's the version you have in the document. This is essentially celebrating the founding of the United States League of Women Voters. Um, the one thing I did add, which Adrian was completely fine with, was the last whereas paragraph that sort of ties it back to our own Amherst League. Um, and the, the citation we passed last year as a town council celebrating that chapter's um, anniversary. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, a number of us are members of the League of Women Voters of Amherst, I believe. Um, myself included. I don't know how many counselors are. Um, so I assume that's one of the reasons it was written to me. It could also be that she's still remembering me as chair of GOL. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think but um, I, I'm happy to sponsor it and see if anyone's got any more changes. Okay. Now I use a procedure, unless someone has a specific change that they're pre to present right away is to go through this whereas by whereas. Um, is that acceptable or do you feel comfortable having read it and looked at it to accept it as it is? Any thoughts on that? I feel okay. comfortable having read it, uh, accepting it as it is. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Um, since this is coming from Mandy who has a particularly keen eye um, I wanted to try to find an error. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I will. Well, there is that competitive. There is that competitive aspect to this sport. Do you know? I, I probably went through it like six times to make sure you guys couldn't find anything. <laughs> That's good. All right. So, this apparently has been vetted very carefully, um, for all the right reasons. And um, so, if there are no specific comments or changes or suggestions, I'm prepared to entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move to declare the um, proclamation celebrating the 100th anniversary of the League of Women Voters of the United States clear, consistent, and actionable. There a second? Second. Okay, Pat seconds it. Um, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor of the motion as stated, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 That is unanimous, so the, this proclamation has been declared uh, clear, consistent, actionable by unanimous vote. 
Now, um, we could proceed to the JCPC and the BCG charges, <coughs> or we could, we have all the written materials that Councillor Steinberg um, submitted. There are two of them in your packet. And um, we could simply begin that discussion and um, see where we stand given his comments. Um, and when he comes, we can then return to it. That would be sort of my inclination. But um, we also have JCPC and BCG charges that were placed in your packet um, by Mandy, um, which I thought was excellent. So we could start with those. Um, any thoughts there? Do you want to start with finance? Or do you want to, do you, uh, Mandy, what are your thoughts on this, Annie? I would prefer to see if Andy shows up before yeah. we discuss the finance Fair ones, enough. but we should, there were other recommendations in the councilor comments that don't relate to either of those three charges. Maybe we could start with them. Okay, these are councilor comments on the restructuring you're thinking yes. about. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to hold that okay. off, and, but again, this so is So then maybe the JCPC and yeah, BCG. Yeah, can we, do you think we can get through those? Uh, well, we can try it at least. So again, I'd like you to take the lead on this if you're willing, but we have the JCPC charge. You want to start with that? Sure. Um, and so in your packet, if you want to open that up. And um, so, so these changes are very minimal. Um, I do have a request to talk about one of them that is not in the packet um, okay. that I had suggested or mentioned a possibility of discussing last meeting. But um, I had volunteered to look at these JCPC and BCG and make sure that when we were eliminate or propose to eliminate the finance committee Portion, portion of that charge that related to who can be on JCPC and BCG, that we incorporated it back into the correct charge. Um, we had decided it didn't belong in the finance charge, talking about other committee memberships. So that's what this is mainly doing. It talks of the change in JCPC is to the composition. Um, cleared up the current school committee to just members of the school committee, members of the library. It's how we've been doing other charges. Um, and then the three members of the town council this, this one actually disagreed with the Finance Committee charge as written. Finance Committee said no more than two shall be from Finance Committee, whereas the JCBC charge said two shall be on the Finance Committee. So I think we had decided as a committee here to go with the Finance Committee wording, the no more than two. Um, and so that's what this potential change reflects. The change I would also like to potentially discuss is the number of voting members. There's been a push in the past to have eight with four from the council. I, at this point, don't know where I stand on that, um, but I thought as we're redoing charges, it might be good to have that discussion again, given that it's been brought up many times. Okay. Thoughts of other committee members on these proposed changes? And questions? questions, yeah, Pat. For, uh, question for Mandy Jo. Um, what, in terms of what is the argument for four counselors? I'm sorry, I've heard it before. I don't remember it right now. So there would be a couple of arguments. The main one written was that JCPC used to have eight members on it, uh, two from finance, two from select board, and then two from school, two from library. And so since our finance is from the council, that, that was the question. Arguments against in the past made were that putting four members of the council onto the JCPC might um, have some negative effects on the school committee and library trustee members feeling that they are overwhelmed yeah. and outnumbered. Um, I think what the council settled on last year was a compromise between two and four of three. Um, but I thought as we're redoing all of this, um, another potential would be that um, four would better able to accommodate the number of counselors that really want to be on this committee. Um, at the same time, this is where my concerns would come in. Three of those members are on finance, which would put a quorum of finance, if that happened and those were the numbers that were put onto JCPC, would put a quorum potentially, if we changed the no more than two to no more than three, um, could put a quorum of finance committee members on JCPC and those charges are so similar that I'd be really worried about open meeting law violations since they're de both dealing with finances. Um, so that's that would be just something I'd wanna bring up. If we do go to four, we might still 
decide to keep a max of two from finance due to that concern, but that might not solve the issue some people want for moving to four. Evan. So with regard to that, um, I don't remember where I stood a year ago, but I think it was that three was a good number because four would make the library and the school committee members feel sort of like mm -hmm. their total number together equals ours. Mm -hmm. So I would probably want to keep it at three, um, but what I would say is if we do move it up to four, I would not vote for something that allows three of those four to be from finance committee for the quorum reason that you stated, but also from the fact that that's a core finance committee is already a very powerful body. And so I like that there's a little bit of a counterweight by adding on finance committee members mm -hmm. on here. Um, and I don't think we should ever be changing the numbers of committee members for any committee just because someone wanted to get on and didn't get on. Any other thoughts? Besides the number of members, any other thoughts about the charge as it has been presented to us? Are we satisfied with the language? Are there other issues that you want to discuss? Hearing none, um, then it sounds like we're ready to proceed uh, on this. And because my thought is that um, if we are satisfied with this document as it's been amended, with the number three apparently being left in place, unless we want to continue that discussion. Seven. I'm sorry. Right. No. Right. Okay. Then we're ready to vote on this. And the thought was that I would uh, notify the president that. We are ready to present this to the council for their approval, as that would be the next step. Okay, all right. I'm willing to entertain a motion. I'll move to recommend the council adopt the Joint Capital Planning Committee charge as, I guess, amended at today's meeting or as proposed at today's meeting, I guess. I, mm -hmm. As we're proposing to amend it, I'm, I guess, is it as amended? As amended, I think. <laughs> as fine. amended, I think. Right, yeah. on this date. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Evan, a second. So we have a motion, uh, it's been presented, it's been uh, seconded. I see no further discussion, so I'm prepared to call the question. All those in favor of the motion as presented, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. It's unanimous. So the JCPC charge as amended on this date has been approved by this body and I will then notify the president that it's ready for prime time. Um, can we go to BCG? So um, the change here, a couple changes. Um, again, because of some other things, the first one would be in composition, adding the representatives of the town council as designated by the town council, which brings it in conformity with sort of the uh, legal opinion we've received as to who's the appointing authority for mm -hmm. BCG for the councilors on that. Um, a new paragraph, um, a, the finance committee had no more than two counselors from finance shall represent the council on the budget coordinating group, so I've moved that over to this to add that into a third paragraph of composition. But then I added, um, and I think this is in yours, a clause that says unless the council designates more than three representatives to BCG, um, what I wasn't sure is this past year we essentially operated BCG as one meeting committee of the whole at the four, at the three boards meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to figure out how you would incorporate if the council says we kind of want it as a whole, as the entire council is just on BCG, but then you put into the charge no more than two counselors from finance can be on BCG. 
like how they don't that doesn't work mm -hmm. and so what i was trying to do with this is what how how to make that restriction work if we're going to as a council just decide the counselors are going to be bcg because it's really only going to meet once a year um so that's where that clause came in i'm happy to hear comments about that and how to work with that the other two bullet points which i think are in yours um in the charge section I took from Andy's request. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, you guys don't see four, so I'm mm -hmm. looking at one that I had added in after I posted mm -hmm. that. Andy had requested two additional bullet points added to the charge within, I think it's Andy. Someone requested yeah. two more in the counselor comments. Mm -hmm. Those bullet points were provide advice to the town manager during the development of the annual budget as requested by the manager and share information amongst the town manager, schools, and library as the town manager develops a budget as required by charter section 5.4. Um, so we should discuss whether to put them into this charge or not. But we don't have those in front of us. We don't have them in front of us. They would, you, you, you would be able to find that in the counselor comments document. Um, okay. Steinberg. Right. Steinberg. Yeah, Steinberg. Steinberg. Okay. yeah. All right, fine, okay. Well, not the Steinberg, he, that's the finance committee. It yeah, it, it's in the councilor comments, comments on restructuring on actually. restructuring proposal. It's that document, it's in that document is where those bullet points are. And I had in my copy here, apparently I did it after I uploaded, because um, that those changes don't relate to the composition changes of moving over from finance, which is why I uploaded before they were in there. Mm -hmm. um, but while we're talking about BCG, we should discuss those requests. Kevin? This maybe is a question for Andy, but I guess the members of this committee could explain his reasoning. I, I'm not quite sure what's meant by to share information amongst the town manager schools and library as the town manager develops a budget. I don't, what, is that, what does that mean? Hmm. I, I looked at 5.4 to see if that language literally came from 5.4, but it, it doesn't appear that it did. I think 5.4 is the development of the budget, right? Mm -hmm. Right, but the language of sharing information amongst the bodies mm -hmm. is not is not explicitly in the budget. I so wonder if it's not idea. supposed to be town manager, it's supposed to be town council, schools, and library as the manager develops. Because um, that makes, I assume it's the manager is the one that's sharing the information. Um, so so <clears> what... <throat> What I see it as is, uh, I, I'm gonna give an example, and I'm not probably the one to speak to this because I've never served on a BCG before, but we got at the Maya conference an average increase in insurance rates that was announced at the Maya luncheon, mm -hmm. and the manager in developing budgets has put in a sort of placeholder insurance rate, and so as new information comes to what that insurance rate increase would be, it could the manager could use BCG as the way to disseminate that new information, um, which seems potentially, since the schools aren't necessarily developing the school budget, the school superintendent is might unnecessarily add a new step with that example. But that you know because why wouldn't the manager just go directly to the library director and the superintendent of schools? and their finance directors to share that information. Um, but, but this may be that similar to what Andy's referring to when he suggests this change, like information that, like that that affects all the budgets. 
So without him present, I guess we're, we're going to be just uh, speculating. Um, so this is something we need to ask him, I take it, when he, if he appears. Should we decide on the composition changes at I, this point? I think that might be useful. Thoughts on that? So I'm trying to piece together my memory, which is tough. So <laughs> last January or February, we, as in the council, appointed several people to BCG. But then that, that collection of people that we appointed never actually met. We just called a meeting that was really a meeting of the whole, and then we called, we said, oh, okay, so that was BCG, correct? Yes. So we're debating a charge for a committee, but it hasn't actually, it, this that, is a confusing that situation. That is required to, in, in the it, uh, required to actually exist by the charter, but has met exactly once and met as full, full committees of all three elected bodies. Full committee of the regional school committee. Yeah. And BCG is supposed to include representatives of the regional school committee, but with all of the Amherst school committee at that meeting, you can make an argument. So, yes, we're debating a charge for a committee that may not ever meet separately than committees of the holes. Yes. <laughs> Those darn charter commissioners. <laughs> with the unless the council designates. Yes. I'm sorry, the, can you just state that for the mic? Damn. <laughs> uh, without any uh, <laughs> French uh, euphemism. Uh, I uh, urge us to accept the two revisions. Okay. Any thoughts, Steve? You're listening, that's all right. You don't have to weigh in, that's okay. Um, Sure, Evan. And so again, I'm not sure that any of us, well, maybe John, you probably know this more so because of your role as vice president. Who, whose decision was it to call a meeting of the whole and then call that the BCG? Was that the president, the manager, was that the appointed members of the BCG? So my understanding, and I haven't heard differently, but I could be wrong, is that the Library Board of Trustees and the regional schools have not actually designated members to BCG. Um, but, but it is under the charter the manager's responsibility to call a, mem a meeting of BCG. And so it would be the manager that made that decision to just designate that meeting as a BCG meeting, um, but post it or somehow, although with a, a, in terms of open meeting law, I have no idea how that works. But in theory, the charter, um, I believe, has the manager shall call a meeting of the budget coordinating group prior to the start of the budget process or at the beginning of the budget process. So section 5.2 says the town manager shall call a meeting of the budget coordinating group as defined below before the commencement of the budget process and may call further meetings during the budget process as necessary. So it's totally up to the manager. It seems that we're satisfied with the compositional changes and what we just need is uh, input from Andy and then we could be ready to move on this. So. I think we're going to have to suspend this for the moment and um, 
move on to another item. Um, and that would be, well, we have a choice. We can, um, the, what I had in mind was then moving on to council comments related to committee restructuring. Um, you have in your packet um, all the comments I've received to date from councilors on our proposed restructuring. We could, um, as we've done in the past, we could go through them one by one and uh, discuss them. And then we could uh, open it up to a general discussion and uh, suggestion of how to proceed. We've obviously had one part of our proposed restructuring carried out on Monday. Um, congratulations. Um, the, the more challenging one is obviously the dividing of CRC into two committees and um, potentially um, shifting the appointments burden of OCA elsewhere and then dissolving OCA. So there, um, those are the other proposals that we have been considering. Um, there seems to be among some on the council a notion that this is some sort of uh, done deal or that we've uh, we figured it all out, and I just want to make it clear, at least to the public, that we're working our way through this, and we have been keeping the council abreast of what we've been doing through reports, um, and uh, so today I'm hoping we can make some more progress with this. Um, we're not, I wouldn't say we're, we're in a rush, but on the other hand, um, the president's made clear that she would like to make appointments to committees. And if we are seriously considering making a, ch a serious change, it's something that we should try to do sooner rather than later. Um, so with that preamble, um, do you want to go through the councilor comments? Um, this would be, uh, right. Um, so let me just go back and tell you. Okay. Um, Councilor comments on restructuring is the main document and then I got a second one just the last a day or two ago and so it says Councilor comments too. That's just an addition. So um, let's start with Councilor comments on restructuring and then um, we can go to the other document once we've gone, gone through it. Um, and that one's very brief, yeah. I will start with a simple matter. It's, uh, so I broke them into, I did not identify by name, um, though perhaps an astute student of council politics could, <laughs> could deduce who's who. <laughs> Um, but I, following a, the procedure of other chairs, I've simply numbered them Roman 1, Roman 2, Roman 3, and then Roman 4 is in the other document, which came after I had posted this on our uh, SharePoint. So I just put it in as a separate document, but it's just one counselor comment, Roman numeral 4. Um, the very first comment from the first counselor has to do with the president, or with, excuse me, with the chair's report and I think is, is not relevant to uh, um, what we're trying to do here today. It's just a comment about the report. Um, item number one is a suggestion related to the finance committee charge and that's something that we hope to talk about a little bit later this morning. And uh, so I think we're gonna hold on that. Item number two, I'll, I'll let you read it as I speak, but essentially is simply a comment on uh, the referral examples. And um, as I did in my committee report for the council this past meeting, um, I simply pointed out that I felt that this is misunderstanding the uh, purpose of these referrals. They're just there for the sake of example. This is how things might look but in the end, it's the council that decides where things get referred. So I hope that um, comment in the report uh, responded to this concern. Um, but the, uh, any thoughts on number two? I, I don't think it's relevant, but yeah, Evan. 
Yeah, I mean, two, two and three, three merges a couple different things together that I think take some time to tease out, but they both have sort of a critique of the documents that we provided. Um, primary and, and secondary, I never, I never, I, so right. I'm speaking right. as the one who sort of put this together, I never saw as secondary devaluing. Right. I almost right. just sort of thought as right. this committee should probably tackle it first. Right. Um, and, and so that, I think that's a misunderstanding. And then the yeah. other one about, I don't like the referral example because it incorporates assumptions uh, and suggests that you drop it. I think what we heard from the council was, thank you for providing these all, all these examples. Yeah. Um, and we heard that from the president when she was here at our last meeting who said, you need to give examples. Right. Um, so yeah, I think just just clarifying that these are just I, I wrote them up. Mandy Joe looked at them, um, changed some of them, added some things. But it's just two of thirteen, and of course, just specifying to the council that every time there's a referral, we're not going to look at that chart and go, no, 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 it has to go here no, because that's what Evan and Mandy Joe said. No, so it's not. Um, it's not an official document. Yeah, it's I, just it's just this. Yeah, making and, sure the report says that. I yeah, think, and it's that's fine. what but I said. Otherwise, it, I think, yeah. yeah. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts about two, but I felt it just was a misunderstanding of why the document was there. Uh, I could understand the misunderstanding, but hopefully um, that's been cleared up. How about three? So I think three goes to many of Councillor Steinberg's requests for the finance committee charge and mm -hmm. to add a specific example, of a specific bullet point too. And I think maybe a difference between various counselors visions of what finance should weigh in on and mm -hmm. what it should not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, I think that um, this, this might be a useful conversation to have with the chair present. Um, Good. I, I expressed earlier my reservations about how broad finance committee was seeing its scope. Um, and, and as I mentioned in previous meetings, I saw that really play out with the 132 Northampton Road debate where mm -hmm. um, people were saying, well, what if putting this means we need new street lights on the street mm -hmm. and what's that gonna cost the town? Mm -hmm. and, it, and we were dealing with these hypotheticals mm -hmm. and I thought this isn't the purview of finance committee. Um, I, so I, I worry a little bit about the suggestion because I think finance has a very focused charge and I think that in some ways they do need to consider the financial implications of bylaws and I think that that should be in there. But I also think that we have to restrict it to like the real implications and not this, well, what if this and what if this and what if this, because that can sort of go on forever. Mm -hmm. And that's really, and it, and it starts to touch less on finances and more on economics, which I, they're often conflated, but are two different things. Okay, so again, something that may take place at a future conversation this morning. Um, item number four has already been dealt with under BCG. And those are the comments from the first counselor. Mandy? Council number two, um, the basic point here is that this perhaps would be best dealt with uh, in a retreat format. And obviously we now do have a retreat coming up. Um, yeah, March, March 21st. Um, uh, any thoughts on that? I assume at a retreat format as opposed to spending council time on this, which we've already spent not much, but some time. Dave? Yeah, so the difference between a retreat and a council meeting is Saturday versus Monday, right? Because both are public meetings and I guess the other difference is that we can make actual decisions at council meetings and right. we don't at retreats. Um, the toothpaste is out of the two. I think that we should start, keep brushing our teeth, I guess, <laughs> just to, to stay along with that. In other words, I think that this is, I think there's some really great, great suggestions that have been put out there, mm -hmm. and I think wait until March 21st, and then after March 21st, it'll get referred and blank, right. blank, blank. Right. I, think, I think maybe refinement or, or mm -hmm. final sandpaper, I, I don't know. I, I think that we should just keep forging ahead. 
Um, although I did have the exact same question that this person did about, I thought the retreat was going to be in February, but that's been settled now. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Other thoughts? Mandy? I, mean, I pretty much agree with what Steve said in a way. I was going to word it differently of this reorganization and a proposal is within our committee's ability to right. do. Right. Um, there is no, I, I still feel strongly, there is no need for us to seek prior approval from other committees to suggest what we believe as this committee focused on governance of our council is appropriate to do. Mm -hmm. um, that we bring it to the council as a whole with a plan and a proposal and then they can tear it apart if they want and then it comes back to the drawing board or they can like it but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that's how committees work. And so waiting for a retreat, that's another six weeks. That means this reorganization isn't gonna happen until July. Right. And, I'm, and I the, think we're close enough given the, yeah. given the feedback we got the first time yes. that, that we can go forward. I think one thing is striking, uh, maybe it's because people just aren't paying attention or they have just too much on their plates, but we haven't gotten any response which says, this is a terrible idea, please don't do it. Um, so, I'm sorry, Pat. It's not completely true. Okay. I think we've heard from some members of OCA that they are not liking the um, elimination of that committee. Um, and I would love to hear more from well, both of you about that. Well, Pat, I, I've, I've not heard that in writing. So I, I've solicited written comments from the counselors, um, and no one has sent me a written comment to the effect that they object to or have concerns about the dissolution of OCA. Um, so I would appreciate. Um, uh, people, if they have concerns, that they send them to the chair so we can talk about them. Um, I have heard them in other contexts, um, but uh, I've not actually had any kind of written statement from anyone objecting to a dissolution of OCA. Uh, and that shouldn't limit our addressing it because we have heard it. Well, Evan, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I want to correct that statement a little bit. Um, OCA has discussed this in a meeting. It, it was a little bit confusing to me at the town council meeting the other night when the statement was made that OCA hasn't had a chance to discuss it. It was an agenda item. OCA spent about 45 minutes on that agenda item. Um, I've also talked one-on-one -on -one with uh, two of the members of OCA who do not sit on this committee. Um, there has been a lot of concern and criticism on OCA about the process and a lot of feelings as though they were not properly apprised of the proposal. Um, but there hasn't been anyone on OCA who has been opposed to the dissolution of the committee. Um, and so I can just n name names. Sarah, um, who's not here, we had a very like, two hour conversation over coffee about this. And she basically said, I support dissolving OCA, but I don't want appointments to go to GOL. Um, Alyssa is in favor of dissolving OCA, um, but I think feel similarly to Sarah about appointments. Um, Darcy would like to see a standalone appointments committee remain as maybe a three member committee, um, but doesn't want to see OCA continue in its current, current form. So uh, the, the concerns from OCA have been process based. They haven't been on the proposal itself. Steve? Well, we're going to jump ahead to number three at some point, but I, I think there's some great suggestions in number three yeah. that address what you were talking about. Right, right. I'm, I'm going to move us to three, but I, I just feel that I need to say, which is always bad, never go on these feelings, but um, we are doing our job, and I don't think that it's the responsibility of a committee that's doing its job to be consulting other committees about whether it should be doing its job. Um, the decision ultimately that we need to make as a council is a decision made by individual council members on a recommendation from a particular committee to the council. It's not about a particular committee. Um, it's about what, so I just, I have an issue with this notion of somehow there's a process violation, or that somehow we need to consult other committees um, 
to make sure it's okay with them that we actually do what we're supposed to do. Uh, and so that a bit sticks, as you can see, in my, my craw. Let's turn to number three, a more pleasant topic. Um, Steve, you like some of the suggestions here. What do you think? I love the last part, that you basically distribute the A part, the appointments part, into three different committees. Each one of these is the one closest to basically who's being appointed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Others on that idea of, or, and anything in, in three actually, but in particular the idea of um, redistributing uh, appointments so that more counselors, I mean, to me it seems one positive would be that it would give more counselors opportunity to be involved directly in um, appointments. So for instance, um, if GOL took on town manager appointments, that would be one large group, um, but um, CRC or some other committee could take on uh, planning board and zoning. Um, thoughts on this? Evan. Yeah, so I think if you remember back to one of our earlier meetings when I came forth with this restructuring idea, I had put forth two ideas for appointments, one that was very similar to this and one was moving all appointments. And I kind of said, I don't really even know which one's the best idea and let's just pick one. And so we sort of went, well, let's just keep appointments together. Mm -hmm. um, reflecting on that now after having spent some time um, I think I'd probably lean a little bit more towards distributing them for two reasons. One, I think we heard from multiple counselors, they'd be more comfortable with that. Um, and I wanna be responsive to the full council. The second thing is one thing that's happened between when I first put this forward and right now is OCA went through the process of appointing a planning board member um, and IS chair led that process. And um, part of this I'm sure was growing pains and learning curve, but it, it was, a lot more work than I thought I originally thought it would be. And, and part of that is things like how we manage our community activity forms and the fact that I was on the phone with Angela on New Year's Eve and she was going through the, literally the paper forms trying to figure out who was in the pool and who wasn't. Um, but I'm thinking now that perhaps I was a little bit naive in thinking that because OCA had established the processes, it would be a marginal amount of work to add to this committee. And I'm thinking that perhaps the workload is greater than I anticipated and it might be easier to distribute. Mandy? So um, I'm in general in favor of the distribution. I've got some questions as to how to distribute it. I mean, everyone suggested it makes sense to put planning board and zoning board appointments in CRC or whoever is dealing with land, land use. So that seems an obvious one. Um, that also seems to be one of the largest responsibilities in terms of appointments because many of the other remaining appointments part of the OCA charge are um, recommending approval of someone else's appointments, which is a whole lot less work than yes. doing the interviewing and coming up with the appointments. Right. Um, but not all of them. So, you know, I struggled with some of where else to put stuff. I found it interesting no one recommended that finance get any appointments, even though there are finance members that need appointed by the town council. Um, now, I don't know whether it would be appropriate for the finance no. committee to make recommendations no. on members that they would, would join them, so I, maybe that's why no one said maybe finance should get some, but, but one of the things I brought up the last meeting was there are appointments to recommend the counselors to appoint to JCPC and BCG. Um, where do they sit? Right now, in my attempt to distribute appointments, I've got them in the GOL committee along with you know, some others with the non-voting liaisons. Um, so finance would get none, but the general idea, I, I think I support putting them across three. It, it goes more towards um, our initial goal of trying to distribute work and quote, meaty work. And if people believe appointments 
um, need distributed for everyone to get that experience, then that supports that initial goal that we started with as to why we were doing this to begin with. It's just, I think, figuring out what goes where. Evan? Well, at the moment, I see appointments being split up between two committees. So help me with, I'm just not following, and it's, it's, it's me, but where, how does the third, TSO, yeah, TSO go ahead. TSO, TSO so would get department heads. I, okay. I'll explain to you what mine was when I was thinking about adding some in. CRC gets planning board and ZBA, which are actual appointments, not recommendations on someone else's mm -hmm. appointments. Mm -hmm. um, TSO gets department heads, mm -hmm. but then I also had TSO getting rec appointments for the town manager or interim town manager if referred by the council, because we had some in the initial GOAL draft charge of these. They don't get these five appointments unless they're referred to, the, to clarify that those when they come up so rarely need a discussion as to how that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, I actually split up some of them and put into TSO the manager or interim manager portion of that that they would handle that if the council tells them to. Mm -hmm. So it's not an automatic. Mm -hmm. um, and then in GOL, if we're going back to its original, mm -hmm. they would have, and so those manager and t interim manager, if that happens, those are substantial amount of work, mm -hmm. obviously, um, and not just a recommendation on someone else's appointment. Um, for GOL, uh, non-voting liaisons, mm -hmm. non-voting finance committee members, um, counselors to JCPC, and counselors to BCG. So those are all actual appointments um, similar to ZBA and planning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's actual recommendation of names. Mm -hmm. And then um, clerk of the council or additional council staff if referred by the council. So as governance, I saw the clerk and the adi potential additional staff relating more to governance mm -hmm. than to town services because it's on the council side, not mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. town manager mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. So that would be an if referred. And then um, they would keep the multiple member bodies from the manager. Right, right, right. That was right. my split. Okay. Evan? So I would mostly agree with what Mandy Joe said um, if I was, when I was doing this through in my head, right. um, but probably swap two places. So one of the things I was thinking about is my original mindset when I was putting this together and that I sort of separated things as internal, external, and then the interface between the two. And in that context, to me, it might make sense that GOL does um, liaisons, non-voting members of the finance committee. Um, I would also, I would put the clerk of the council and additional staff and the town manager and interim town manager because all of these are internal in GOL but I would probably take multiple member bodies and put it in TSO because that's sort of a, it's part of our government, but it's sort of at the interface of the community. Um, I, I'm not super committed to that, but it was just this idea of if we're sort of distributing them where things might logically go, um, perhaps multiple member bodies would go to TSO. Um, and then I think we'd also want to have something maybe in GOL that says, and all other appointments by the council or something like that. And I guess I'm just thinking off the top of my head, um, if one of our appointments from rank choice voting resigns in this summer, um, we would need to appoint someone and it wouldn't necessarily be clear where it would go. So um, I, I don't know if there's another example that might come up, but mm -hmm. I guess there, there could be. Um, so I think I generally like Mandy Joe's proposal. I would probably swap multiple member bodies and town manager, but I'm also like, this isn't um, my hill to die on. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's, you know, I'm sorry, Evan, go ahead. So I guess maybe 
the first step. It, it does feel like we have consensus about distributing appointments. Is that uh, okay? No, I, it, I agree. I think that's that's where we're at. I think there's some question about how to divvy it up. We have a couple of, or at least two, potential proposals. Um, yeah, Mandy? Do we have consensus on the CRC divvying up, though, such that we could just dispense with that charge, potentially, if, unless there's any no other changes? Because it would just be adding a bullet point into the CRC charge to make recommendations to the town council regarding appointments by the council to the planning board and zoning board of appeals, charter section 2.9C. We didn't get any other comments on that one. We got the, the newest comment talks about transportation and parking well, into but TSO, but I think it's already in TSO. Yeah. So it's not a CRC, it's not in CRC right now. Well, I think it's also, as we know, just you, you can get all the written comments in the world, but when you finally come to a council meeting, all kinds of, of you know what breaks loose. Yeah. So um, I think all we can do is do our best and but understand that objections can come from anywhere at any time. Um, we are agreed, it sounds like we have a consensus for distributing appointments. Um, we're going to need to fashion some kind of alternative, I mean, it's sort of something we can decide amongst ourselves. Um, and maybe one option is for, um, or maybe we can do it now, but it is to have Mandy and Evan present their sort of versions based on their reasoning, and we could resolve this at our next meeting. Another is we could try to resolve it right now. Mandy. So I'd frankly be fine with going with Evan's reasoning. It also makes sense, and I, <laughs> I don't have a huge dog in the fight as to where some of them set. Some of them aren't going to happen very often, that it's likely they're not going to sit with a standing committee anyway, um, especially town manager and our town manager. If we get that, I can completely see the council creating a separate committee for that. Um, you know, but it's good to have it somewhere to recognize that that is a council appointment, um, but you know, I, I don't, if we want to go with Evan, I, I'm okay going with Evan's suggestions. I'm a little reluctant to move the town, the multiple member body appointments to TSO. Um, uh, GOL is a committee that, um, I, I guess my, my concern is that I would like TSO to have a fair amount of breathing space to do lots of, you know, and, and to do investigate or whatever, do some things related to town services. GOL is concerned with governance, organization, legislation. I'm thinking more governance. Um, uh, maybe it also fits in with my very strong desire to get rid of GOAL and just keep GOL. Um, uh, but I'm wondering why can't we just keep the multiple member body appointments with GOL and uh, ease the burden of TSO so that they just don't have to deal with that. If they deal with department heads um, and maybe with the interim and town manager appointment issue, which should be very rare if ever, and the rest of the time they can focus on the things that hopefully should keep them very busy. GOL is going to be dealing with bylaws and that's certainly going to be, we're going to talk about that before we're done today. Um, but otherwise, I think they could handle what I personally feel are, generally speaking, fairly straightforward um, reviews. Um, the town manager, there's a very robust process. The town manager follows it. And I think, in my personal opinion, as long as that's done and he's giving us the information that we ask, um, there really isn't a whole lot for whatever body it is that's reviewing these to do other than perhaps over the long term trying to come to some understanding of how um, this deals with diversity and equity and so on. That's a different issue. But I'm just thinking, I think you should stay with GOL. That's my, my gut. Mandy. So here I am going to argue against my proposal and for Evan's <laughs> proposal. Um, one of the benefits of swapping and moving town manager to GOL, if referred, 
um, and moving multiple member bodies to TSO is that then TSO holds all review of town manager recommended appointments. They are not split between two separate committees, which means the review process will remain consistent versus if they were within two separate committees, two separate committees might choose to do that review process differently. Um, and then GOL gets everything but planning board and zoning board that deals with actual recommendations of people. And most of what GOL has with those actual recommendations of people is counselors. It does keep that finance committee section that is members of the residents, but nearly everything else once plan participatory budgeting and ranked choice voting are dissolved when they're done their work is mostly internal to recommending fellow counselors. Um, and so you're keeping processes sort of within one committee so that the process from the external point of view is the same for that type of appointment no matter what board it's for. And there's my argument against my proposal and for Evans. <laughs> Other thoughts? No one is moved by my, no, I'm no, con no concern that um, I really do want TSO to be able to focus on town services and constituent needs and be, uh, have some a chance to maybe do a little exploring and da 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 da. I don't want them to be, and, and maybe it's, it won't be that big of an issue. I don't want them to be spending most of their time just going through appointments and approving them. And we know it doesn't take huge amounts of time, but it can. Um, that's my only concern, but that's my concern. I, it's elegant, what, and we have a meeting of the minds here, and that's a plus. Two of us. Uh, two. two minds, and, and I'm waiting to hear from the other two minds. Uh, <laughs> um, I think one thing I would appreciate and I think the rest of my committee members would appreciate would be some kind of document or draft of how this actually would work. Um, and I'm not asking, obviously not asking for it now, but it would be something we would then review um, at our next meeting and refine if needed to be um, and with the hopes that, again, that's moving us closer to the goal of bringing this to the council. Um, so that's asking a, a little bit, again, of, of two of my colleagues. Um, Pat. Okay. I'm not sure whether I have it. Um, I'm bringing up a separate issue. I support Evan's um, suggestions. I am concerned with people on the council who are um, bound and determined that to see GOL as taking power. And I'm, I know mm -hmm. this shouldn't be a consideration, but I'm wondering if we're moving multiple member bodies and everything, as you're suggesting, George, into GOL, that we aren't really setting up something that's going to feed that that argument. I don't, I don't. I don't really consider it an argument. Um, I'm. am just concerned. Mm -hmm. I am also concerned, given that JCPC was so contentious. Um, in terms of councillor reactions to whether they got chosen or not. I mean, and so was CRC. How do we? And this is not necessarily the purview of this committee. How? Would, do we begin to deal with that kind of contentious behavior or belief that there's manipulation and power grabbing and all this other stuff going on? And I, I don't know how to address those things, or if we should, I don't know. Evan? So a couple of things, I mean, I will support my own proposal, but again, I'm not, I, I, I can see the merit, the merit to both um, what Mandy Joe said, which was far more articulate than what I said, and also to what George said. Um, I think part of my inclination toward TSO also a little bit is capacity, where we are not subtracting anything from GOL's charge in this restructuring, but we are adding things. Um, and certainly we have not 
in a, we did in the beginning, but we have not recently had agendas where we're like, oh, what should we even talk about? Um, we've had stuff to do. And so the, I think that TSO might have a little bit more capacity in how it's designed. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sold on that. Uh, but I, I could go either way on that. Uh, regarding JCPC and BCG, although the contention was really over JCPC, I think part of that contention, and I might be wrong, but I think part of that contention a year ago was that JCP is a town council appointment, and yet last year it was a de facto presidential appointment. Our president made the decision about who to appoint, and then she gave it to the council, and the council said, sure. And so even though we had veto power, it was still a really a presidential appointment. And I wonder if maybe if it was within a committee and it was an appointment that was being recommended not by the president, who a lot of people have maybe some concerns about consolidation of power, but came from five people, maybe it would be less contentious. I don't know. Probably That's probably naive. But I, I do think that there was some concern about the president has a tremendous amount of power and he was a appointment that was given specifically to the council, and yet it was really made by the president still. And so maybe if it came from a committee, it, there would be a feeling like there was a little bit more discussion over it, but I don't, I don't really know, maybe not. I'd like us to move, if, we, if you're willing, to um, Councilor Comment Roman numeral four, which unfortunately is in a separate document. Um, but I don't want to cut off discussion here, so is there, if there's something more, People want to add, Evan? So just because it sounds like you gave uh, me and perhaps Mandy Joe some homework, I, I want to make sure, I, I, can I just get some idea? I was so going to hold off on the homework assignment gonna, for well, a moment just before we okay, went through Okay, we can four. go through this. And then but you, you're right, I do have something in mind for uh, a request to one or both of you, but let's, let's do four and then we'll come back to the homework assignment. So we have one other counselor, elaborate set of seven specific uh, comments. Um, first comment agrees to dissolve OCA. Second appointments seems to follow what we've been talking about. That one seems to support the boards and committees in TSO, not GOL, that is if correct. I read that, that correctly. Is, and that is at the moment where it seems we at least have two counselors in agreement, um, both who have given, I think, a lot of thought to how to divvy this up. So it looks like two is endorsing um, what seems to be emerging as a possible consensus position. Um, number three. So here's the suggestion about parking going to TSO, essentially. Yeah, right, it's already there. Number four, so yep, go ahead. It, it's Mandy. there, but if someone says, if someone actually wrote suggest parking going to TSO, maybe, it, you know, it says make recommendations on measures related to public ways, including transportation. Maybe we put including transportation and parking to just clarify that since mm -hmm. it, if someone didn't think it was there already, mm -hmm. it, it, needs clarification. it might need clarification. Okay, Evan? So here's why I didn't write parking there, as parking in many ways is encapsulated by public ways, but in other ways is not. And so again, um, so on Monday we were presented a proposal for a private parking facility, um, and the council would have to rezone, um, I think, to, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. That's a zoning change, so it logically goes to CRC. It's also having to do with parking, so should it go to TSO? But it's not really parking in the way we consider public ways parking. And so I think the reason I didn't put it in there is, is because not all park, some long-term parking things and things that have to do with private parking might more logically sit with CRC. And some things like the proposed parking benefit district really might fall more with finance because it's about how we spend from the transportation enterprise fund. And so I think I saw as parking is too broad to assign to this committee and I, and I put public ways in to suggest public parking that has to do with public ways. Now maybe we want to put all parking in there, but that's, that's why I actually didn't write the word parking. Okay. 
Okay, we can take a quick break of, uh, sure. So we're gonna pause for just a moment. And uh, which button should I push here? The pause button. Oh, the not the pause. So uh, we're back and um, we are dealing with counselor comment item uh, number four. And um, further, we can go through them. So it's an issue with parking and whether this should be uh, put into the TSO or not. Um, leave GOL to focus on bylaws, rules of procedure, um, essentially doing what it's doing. The suggestion that it could be three people rather than five. Evan? So this has been a suggestion that I've supported in the past and probably have changed my mind on. And I think one of the reasons is just, um, you know, I was having a really great conversation with a counselor um, at MMA this past weekend from Framingham. Their committees are three-person committees. They have 12 committees, but they're three-person committees. Mm -hmm. And um, standing next to us was one of his fellow committee members. And we started talking about something and the guy had to go, you know what, I gotta walk away because we're a quorum of that committee. And mm -hmm. I thought, God, having a two, two person quorum mm -hmm. makes working together on things really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and so even though I've always proposed shrinking our committee so we all have less work to do, I, I think that that presents a, a challenge. Okay. Any other thoughts about a three person committee? I think it's too small and not diverse enough, potentially. When you think about the workload, potential workload of GOL, um, what's the advantage of five versus three, or does it really matter? So Mandy? if we're adding certain appointments into it, and the appointments we're looking at adding into it are actual person appointments, not review of someone else's appointments, that um, is going to add work, um, as I think two of our members who have sat on OCA will understand, even if it's counsel appointing counselors, that you know, appointing counselors to things is a little less work. We know each other, so we probably don't have to interview each other, but the, the, the non-voting finance committee members, that appointment is going to be interviews, is going to be stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so that, to me, goes against reducing the committee size. And I have to say, given what we've just given on Monday night, um, and we may hopefully have at least a few moments before we're done today to talk about it, that's a fairly substantial chunk of work. I would, um, I, the bylaw review committee was three members, and you guys did that, so uh, it was five. Oh, you had the two and two, right, so you had five, right. More work than But surely that could have been done by three people, right? That's a joke. Um, all right. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Those three. The non-counselor three. Yeah, the, the non-counselor. Bernie could have done, yes. Bernie and Richie <laughs> just together. Yeah. So there was just dead weight. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. So it sounds like the consensus, unless I hear otherwise, is that the, the three is under, we appreciate the comment, but we feel five yeah. is probably wiser. Um, I definitely agree with five um, for a number of reasons. <laughs> but... Um, one is simply that it means we don't have to, there's a lot of just renaming things that doesn't have to take place. That would be nice. But it just seems that, that what GOL is doing, it, or if we take appointments and spread it around, it doesn't. So that's, it's not overreaching. I don't know what that means. Um, maybe somebody wants to come in on that, but um, I don't know how the name is overreaching. Um, uh, but uh, maybe this, this counselor might object to uh, having any appointments in GOL, so that could be an issue, I guess. Um, but if Mandy? we're spreading appointments out, right. it doesn't make sense to just give one committee the name appoint to add appointments no, to the I, title no, of one right. committee. It totally doesn't. No, so. I, I was thinking that, that the idea of overreaching would be that they just, they, this is perhaps representing a viewpoint that GOL is always trying to uh, get more power, and so this is another move, and not the name so much, but the fact that it would actually have some appointments that it would have to deal with. That's a debate we'll have in council, probably. Um, 
any other, so six is, uh, you know, I'm not so sure that'll be true, but who knows. Uh, seven, um, have we eliminated outreach? That's a really good question. And I have some thoughts on that, but Pat, why don't you, yeah, let's hear from the rest of you first. Um, have we eliminated outreach? Has OCA been meeting with our three? And uh, so, yeah, thoughts on this. Evan? So the new committee is literally called Town Services and Outreach. So I, I, given the thing about moving public ways and this question, I have to question whether this counselor actually read the charge for TSO. Probably not. Um, because it includes outreach and it includes helping with district meetings, so. Mm -hmm. I guess my question was slightly different, but not quite as directed. Microphone, please. My question was a bit different, and, um, and I'll restate it. Um, what outreach work was OCA doing? And, and so I have some sense of what, um, what we're putting in TSO, or was that a part of your charge that you weren't able to reach? Evan? The short answer is that is a part of our charge that we weren't able to reach. We did have, I think, one meeting with all of the CPOs present, and we had one meeting with the RAC, and I also, as chair, had a meeting with the RAC. Um, but the, there are only two real things that I could point to that we actually did in response to our outreach charge. One would be that outreach survey that all counselors filled out and that we reported on. I, I don't know if counselors felt that was useful. It might be useful to get feedback on that at some point. Um, this, and then the second thing was we organized uh, the table at the block party, um, right? We, we met with the CPOs, figured out what they were planning on doing, making sure we didn't uh, duplicate what they were doing, came up with the ideas and implemented it. Um, so we did a very small bit of the charge. I think that um, appointments just took up so no, much of our no, airspace. This is not a judgment. I'm just yeah. trying to explain. But, and I guess my other... Go ahead, Dave. I, Please, Pat. So I'm not, I may be jumping. Um, when we're put... If the talk about putting parking issues into TSO um, makes me really nervous because... I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but I'm getting um, so many requests for... Uh, parking changes from residents. Um, I'm wondering whether we need a parking committee, a town, you know, and maybe that would fit in with the downtown working group's um, ideas. I'm not sure, and I, I'm just kind of wondering here a, a bit with it, but I don't know if I want to sit on a committee where all the residents' complaints come many of which are valid and some that are not, and then getting feedback on, uh, that's enough. I think that's a conversation I hope we'll have at least for a few minutes this morning and maybe hopefully will be continued, but I wanna go back to outreach okay. for a moment uh, because we have town services and outreach and I've come to the uh, conclusion that um, I'm wondering why we even have outreach at all um, as a, uh, part of any charge. It seems that in practice, w we've been doing this. It's, it's not a function of any particular committee. Um, I'm not sure that other towns do this, that they have a communications and outreach committee. Uh, I, may, I obviously could be completely wrong and I'd be happy to be corrected, but um, I think maybe part of the logic of it originally was that we're a new body and we really wanted to make sure that people knew what was going on and we wanna make sure that there was outreach and communication, and we do obviously value this as a council and we value it individually, but I'm wondering, and just for the sake of argument, whether um, this is really something that is, it should be on a, given to a particular committee. Um, we certainly on OCA um, found that we couldn't give it a great deal of attention, but it seemed to get done anyway. It seemed that um, outreach and communications was happening on a many, many different levels. Um, both by individual counselors and, and through the CPOs and da-da-da-da-da. And um, so I'm uh, thinking that um, outreach should just, it's everybody's job, it's everybody's responsibility, and it's not a particular committee that, that's sort of tasked with it. And the one committee that was tasked with it um, really didn't uh, do much with it, and it wasn't because we didn't care. Um, 
and it seemed to happen anyway without our you know help. So Pat, I agree. A lot happened, and um, I'm particularly grateful to this um, Jennifer and Angela and Brianna. But my concern around outreach and not reflecting on OCA is that we still have a majority um, white, middle and upper class people participating here in meetings, participating on committees. And so the outreach into communities mm -hmm. of color, the outreach of c c to renters and things like, okay. really hasn't yet been maximized. And I, I know attempts are being made, but what is it that we're missing as middle class white people about who we attract and who we bring in to meetings. Um, and and I, I don't have an answer, I don't. But to me, that makes outreach still a very rich area for the council to look at, because I'm tired of seeing the same faces. Mandy? So I agree with that, but I also wanna mention the part that Evan mentioned that OCA did do, which was the organizing tables at the block party and that. And if we remove some of these items from a charge, we run into the problem we had last year, which was who's gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? There's no decision-making process for who does that when it's a council thing. Um, <coughs> you know, certainly the town has its own things and until we figure out that relationship between us as the legislative body and the town's activities on town staff part for those types of events and their tables. Um, someone on the council has got to say, you know, we want a presence at the block party. This is how we're going to do it. And, and maybe ultimately in a few years that gets worked out within town staff and within the internal government and doesn't have to sit with a committee. But for now, I think it needs to sit somewhere. Okay, and so you, you would keep it with TSO, as Evan has suggested in his proposal. Okay. Evan? Yeah, I guess on top of that, I think um, Oka's excuse for not working on outreach was that we were so buried by appointments. And I guess, um, and, and specific, and, and honestly, it, ZBA and planning board appointments for the entire year. Um, and there's, a, I, I do have sort of a, a question I constantly ask myself, which is if we weren't so buried by appointments, would we have done more in outreach? And so I, I guess I'm leaning towards keep it in this charge for the first year, and if TSO comes back in a year from now and says, we didn't know what to do about outreach, mm -hmm. then maybe we say, you know what? The town council can't figure this out. Mm -hmm. We have to figure out a way to do this. But um, given that this committee should, should have a little bit more capacity to focus on outreach, it'd be interesting to see if whoever the members are could figure out what that actually okay. looks like. Okay. So the answer number seven is no, we have not eliminated outreach. It's in the TSO charge. Please read it. Okay. Okay, so we've gone through all the council comments related to uh, our proposal. Um, I'd like us to come quickly within the next few minutes to a kind of decision about how to proceed next. Uh, Evan, go ahead. Uh, so if I, if I may, um, so it sounded like the most, dis we haven't touched the finance committee charge yet. It sounds like we're pretty much in agreement on the others except for the appointments issue, and it sounds like that's sort of what's mm -hmm. being asked of me. So I'd like to just try and get an idea of where we stand on some of these. So I, I listed out, I think, nine appointments, mm -hmm. um, and I'd just like to get an idea of, of where I'm putting these. So um, if, I could, if, if I may just go, go through ahead. them really quickly. Go so ahead. it planning board with CRC, do we have consensus on that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. ZBA with CRC. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, potential new town manager at, or interim town manager. Where is that? Upon referral. Is that GOL or is that TSO? Both have been put out there. Well, given the elegance that you're striving for here in your design, is it more internal, external? Um, that's the criteria you've been using. So potential assistant or town manager appointments. Uh, I favor GOL. And the reason being? Um, 
internal to governance and also GOL likely will have other person appointments instead of confirming of appointments. And, and TSO will not. And these are by council referral anyway? Yes. Yeah. By yes. council referral? Okay, so if that's going to GOL, can I also assume potential clerk of the council and additional town council staff? Good. Okay. Uh, Non-voting resident members of the finance committee. Is that, did that land in GOL? Okay, so we're not recommending to give that to finance. It doesn't seem appropriate to me to give the committee the power to appoint people that are going to be serving on the committee. Okay. And I have a problem with that, but maybe I shouldn't. But. Okay. Uh, town council liaisons to town committees. Is that GOL? Yeah. Yes. Oh, boy. Okay. At least it wasn't my proposal, and I think it... It so what the, what's there. the rationale here? So this is town council, again, just remind town council. Liaisons, liaisons to town committees. To town committees. And all right, here's my, where my ignorance is, is, is emerging. My understanding, clearly false, is that this was something that the council president did and explain to me where, where I've obviously lost the train of thought here. Um, so um, let's say we want to liaison to, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the housing trust, right? That's what we're talking about, okay? And the, the council president solicits people and says, who's interested in, in being liaisons? And she gets a, a list. And then she says, or he says, this is where I'm going to suggest people go. That's not how it's going to work. Um, we're going to have a list of people's preferences and then it's going to go to GOL and they're going to make the recommendations is what we're envisioning. Yes, yeah, so, um, so Charter 29D says the town council right. may select from above its membership. So we've always considered it a town council appointment. Yeah. Uh, it currently sits in OCA. So OCA had the, dis the first discussion which was which committees do we think should get right. liaisons. Um, if the plan is if, if we continue as if we have the committee structure that we have now, the plan is if the town council approves of those committees, it will go back to OCA to make recommendation on who to appoint as liaisons. Um, oh boy. Okay. Sorry, keep going. So is it GOL? Well, apparently. <laughs> okay, George. I don't envy GOL that, but that's all right. Hopefully I'll be out there today. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> JCPC and BCG, I assume that's also GOL? Oh, Lordy. Okay. Um, other appointments, uh, let's go to that last. Okay. Appointments by the town manager to multiple member bodies. We have that too. TSO. We decided on TSO? Yeah, that's what we thought. <laughs> And department heads, and TSO. Department, that's right. Okay. That covers the, uh, the waterfront. So the only other thing I have here is an other category, again, to encapsulate anything we may miss that are appointments by the town council, again, such as if someone resigns from PVC or RCV in their town council appointment. Mm -hmm. I assume that's in GOL, but it could also, in theory, be in TSO. Or we don't even need, to, to me, it's nice to have a little catch-all just in case we miss something. If we but. don't have the catch-all, it allows us to put it wherever it's most we appropriate. Leave it, right? Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay, thank you. And so your thought is that you could write out briefly a sort of uh, a description of what we are, this is a suggestion for those of you out there in TV land and also <laughs> for my fellow counselors, this is just a suggestion to the council as to how, if we were to divvy up appointments, they might be divvied up. And that would, uh, if you could produce for me a document that would do that, it would be very helpful. Um, I have notes, but. Um, and then do we feel we need to come back, and maybe we do, I have no problem with this. It's not like I'm rushing to get this to the council uh, on February 10th. Uh, it was already made clear by one counselor that, uh, anyway. Um, 
but do we feel we need this? Should, this should come back to us at our next meeting, um, which would be February 12th to uh, review. Okay, all right. Um, I was hoping to get the finance charge settled. Um, we started about 15 minutes late, uh, almost, and I'm not trying to ruin people's plans, but we still have a number of things we need to do, and we usually meet for two hours, but I'm open to... Uh, I'm done. Okay, well, we'll, we'll decide it at, at the... Let's go well, I understand, Steve. Let's no, I understand. Oh, there he is. All right. <laughs> we thought you forgot us. For those of you in TV land, Councillor Steinberg is making an appearance with his entourage, yeah. with his posse. <laughs> and dancing girls. Right. <laughs> That's quite all right. We've been busy. And So this is item number two on our agenda, um, and we want to come back to, actually, I'm sorry, it's item number, what is it, item number? Uh, Three, four. Four, four, it's item number four. <laughs> it's item number four. We want to come back to Finance Committee, because uh, our hope is that we can come to some agreement as to what the charge should look like, and um, be prepared to present that to the Council on February 10th. That's the hope. And Councillor Steinberg has sent us a number of very thoughtful comments related to that. Um, we've also been uh, looking at a number of other Councillor comments. Uh, we've gone through them all, actually. Um, but this is specific to the issue of the Finance Committee. So I think it spills also, I think Mandy, you said it also spills over into BCG. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So we have some. Um, do you want to start with BCG? Do you want to start with finance? Anybody? Is BCG simpler, easier? Or they, BCG might be easier? All right. Someone take the lead here, please, other than yours truly. So get the BCG. So, um, Go ahead, Mandy, please. There were two items you wanted to add to the BCG charge in your suggestions. Um, they were provide advice to the town manager during the development of an annual budget as requested by the manager. Um, and share information amongst, and you had town manager schools and library as the town manager develops a budget as required by the charter section 5.4. I wonder if that was supposed to be town council schools and library. But I think we had questions as to what these were meant to do. We weren't sure how these were to operate. Right? Is that what it was, Evan? Yeah, I, I just got the email up and put it on. That's why I was trying to get onto my computer, sure. too, so we we're all looking at the same email. Um, what I was really trying to do in May, I, did, I don't think that the question is as much um, town manager is just town budget. Uh, what you want to do is um, make sure that information about the needs for our municipal functions for their capital, for the schools for their capital, and their library for their capital are all available in a single place, and that the BCG is, is, serves that function of bringing that information together. What are the needs? Um, so whether it be major building needs, um, repair needs, um, equipment needs, that if you're developing a good five-year plan, you, you want to bring it all together and you want all of the uh, players to come together. The uh, reason I probably wrote town manager down there is that it's really the superintendent um, and the uh, business manager from the school who takes the lead role in formulating that, even if it's the information delivered by the school committee members. But, um, but it really should be amongst the town 
our municipal functions, schools, and library. Hey, Andy, go ahead. So I have a question. I'm going to, I get the first bullet point in a way, because this is a charge for what BCG shall do. So if I add the words BCG in front of this, that BCG provides advice to the manager during the development of the annual budget as requested by the manager. So if the manager wants advice, BCG provides it. That makes sense to me as a concept. But BCG sharing information amongst town, schools, and library as the manager develops a budget, and the, as required by Charter Section 5.4 is the manager's budget. I don't, I'm still struggling to understand. I don't see BCG as having the information. The information sits with not really any of the members of BCG if they're elected. So I'm having trouble understanding how BCG would accomplish share information amongst count, how would they get the information? Um, is that more of an action or more of a purpose statement that the purpose of BCG is to share information amongst these groups as the, as the budget is developed versus a charge as to what BCG is supposed to do? Mm-hmm very delicate distinction between that you're making between you know it's really a question of how active the role is or how passive the role is I suppose but it's still where do you when you're trying to ha have the BCG have a role in the five year plan where does the information from the five year plan come from Does BCG have a role in the five-year plan, or is that JCPC? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. I think the BCG, the, fun, the, the problem with BCG is, is that it served a clear function in the old form of government, mm -hmm. and I, it got adopted um, by our... Uh, and I'm not looking at you and saying this, Mandy. <laughs> you guys adopted it in the Charter Commission and um, didn't think through the question as to whether the reasons that it existed in the first place came up. The, the problem that we had in the old form of government was um, a, a really a couple. One is that you'd have always the potential that um, the school committee might come to town meeting and um, say, we need more money for schools and uh, make the plea directly to the town meeting and bypass the finance committee process. And that, uh, that created um, a potential for havoc by letting that um, surface unnecessarily on the floor of town meeting. And uh, the other uh, that was much more direct, and I'll just say it because as, you know, these are all people who are no longer actively involved, but there was a period of time where um, the select board was having real differences of opinion with the finance committee as to what the priorities for the budget should be. and. Uh, the Finance Committee was charged under that form of government with developing a budget to propose so that um, it wasn't the town manager as we currently have that is bringing a budget to the council. We had a Finance Committee that was bringing a budget to town meeting and that's a standard um, format for town governments across the Commonwealth, which we are no longer. Uh, and uh, so we were having these huge, huge battles going on between, um, this was back when Ed, probably Ann Awad was chair um, and the, between the select board and the finance committee. And uh, so there was one night after a uh, 
meeting of the Finance Committee were uh, three of us uh, who are on the Finance Committee and John Misanti, who is Finance Director, got together and said, well, what can we do to make this better? And sort of out of that conversation, the four of us came up with this grand idea of a budget coordinating group. And um, it sort of became institutionalized and had a life of its own. But it was really created to serve a purpose that doesn't exist anymore. And now we've got it in the charter and we're trying to figure out what the perp w w how to give it a purpose. You missed our earlier conversation about BCG, which was we're really dealing with a charge that for a committee that hasn't met and probably won't ever meet except in committee of the whole. <laughs> so. And that's so maybe we should try to keep it, um, I mean, in the interest of time and energy, we should try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I'm, what my desire is to create a charge that we can bring to the council that will not be terribly controversial, but will at least um, do what we, to the limits that we can. And so I, I just want to produce a document that um, we can all live with. Um, and we're not going to resolve this larger constitutional question or historical <laughs> question. Um, can we just resolve this charge? And um, we have a draft in front of us. Um, you've made some excellent suggestions. Um, what I'm hoping to do here is come, come up with some, if not compromise or agreement, um, here. Um, or at least with something that you, Andy, could live with. Um, so we don't spend this time at council doing all this. Um, I think that makes sense. Yeah. The other thing that is potential is that um, if the budget um, changes, and I mean the budget is the amount of money available to fund the whole bundle of things that get funded, changes upwards or downwards during the year, and you know, put it into the context of uh, get really great news far and beyond anything we could possibly ever dream of at the um, from the governor's budget at the MMA meeting, or uh, we get really devastating news because of the, uh, the amount of money that's available to the state has gone down and the state's in such great financial problems. Then you get into the question as to whether there should be a substantial shift amongst the proportions of the budget that go to municipal functions, library, operating, and school. And each one is going to come in and have its opinion and it's going to have its needs. And um, that's where the BCG might come in to be uh, an might, important might forum. Yeah. And so creating language that, um, allow the, that is a forum to have that discussion take place that involves the council, so it's not just the, um, involving the town manager, but the council gets involved it creates a place for it. So it's sort of like uh, creating a piece of a charge for something you, never, you hope you'll never have to use. Right. So can item number two be wordsmith, or do you want item number two removed? Um, you could say, ensure that. So I mean, I understand Mandy's point, just as a matter of English language, that um, we need an action statement here, right? We have an action statement in number one. Number two, really, it seems difficult to construe it. Uh, as how it could actually be something that the BCG could do. But uh, would that solve the problem, Andy, or would you prefer to have it simply removed? Because um, I'd like us to get through this and get it out the door. So we could do something like ensure that there is communication amongst the council, the manager, the school committee, the superintendent, the trustees, and the library director so that you get everybody in there and, it's, and you have all of the bodies um, about um, significant budget issues that the town manager uh, 
to assist the town manager as he develops a budget uh, is required according is required by yes. five point four. So I guess what I would do is keep the first bullet point, provide advice to the manager during the development into the charge section. I would move the entire second point, share information as right. a Purpose. purpose, BCG coordinates budgeting between the manager, council, school committee, regional school committee, and library board of trustees, and shares information amongst those entities as the town manager develops a budget. Or ensures that. Or ensures that, that information, information is shared, shared right. amongst those entities so as there, the town manager. Under, under purpose yeah. rather than yeah. under charge. If, if that that's makes acceptable sense. to you, we can incorporate it, and um, Mandy would make that change. Are there any other changes to BCG that we need to make that we wanted to touch base with Andrew on? Because I think we've talked about everything else with BCG. And um, did we vote on it? No, we didn't. We did All right. So I would uh, like us to make that change and to accept the any changes that have been made and we've talked about already, is my understanding. And. Um, have this presented as a motion and move it to um, so we can get it to the council. We've already done it with JCPC. We've done it. Um, I'd like to do it with BCG. The only time yep. that the BCG had a significant amount of meetings and had a really contentious time was when we were developing the operating override and. Um, to present the voters and we wanted to make sure that the override amount was correct and that the messaging was correct and the BCG served that function at that time. Under our current form of government, um, I don't know would we do that in the finance committee or would we do that somewhere else uh, right. if we ever got to that point. Uh, Are we prepared to move to a uh, vote? I'd like to have a motion and I'd like to vote on it. Um, I know, Mandy, you're trying to make these I'm, changes. I'm trying to, exactly. yeah, I'm trying to do the changes. Right. Um, That's all right, take your time, so take your time. If we want to get it right. Um, so, um, so I think the, the changes are, um, we've already sort of discussed the compositional changes, which is adding as designated by the council into the first paragraph of composition and adding a second, a third paragraph that says no more than two councilors from finance shall represent the town council on the budget coordinating group unless the council designates more than three representatives to BCG. Um, purpose would be amended to read BCG coordinates budgeting between the town manager, town council, school committee, and regional school committee, and library board of trustees, and ensures that information is shared amongst those entities as the town manager develops a budget as required by charter section 5.4. And then the charge would add one bullet point that reads, provide advice to the town manager during the development of the annual budget as requested by the manager. Okay. Um. That is the amended charge. Um, I'm prepared for a motion. Or can we count that as a motion? We can just sure, listen. that's a motion. <laughs> we have a motion before us. Um, and we have a second from Councilor Schreiber. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand and signify by saying aye. 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 So the vote is 4-0 with one member absent. Thank you, Steve for sticking around for that. Um, can we turn to the finance charge? Do we have the energy and time to do this? Because Andy's made, yes we do. Thank you Steve, no that's great. Um, and I think um, Pat may be back, but um, we do have a quorum. Andy's asked that we um, insert an additional bullet to the um, charge itself. Is that acceptable to, um, I'm sorry? Uh, I'm looking at, I think he's placed it in two places, but I'm looking at the uh, um, counselor comments document, item number one, which now is probably clear to everyone, comes from Councilor Steinberg. 
and this is number one under that charge should have an additional charge, quote, to investigate proposed bylaw revisions, policies, or other initiatives under council consideration, determine whether it will affect town revenues, expenses, or finances. This was a suggestion he made, and I want to know if this is acceptable to um, my fellow committee members. Sorry? Yes. You missed the vote. <laughs> You've been kicked off. No, no, I'm saying yes, I agree with that. With that addition. addition. Okay. Any other thoughts to adding that to the charge? Is that Evan? Right. Thoughts? So I'm supportive of adding this to the charge with the hope that it will be uh, narrowly interpreted. If you can come up with wording, um, I have tried very hard to make sure that when we look at things, and I'll give you the two examples real quick, that what we just completed yesterday. One was housing. We really did try and focus on the housing issues. We, we, there were a couple of references in the draft report that, talk, uh, that, that make reference to other issues, but we didn't deal with them, make recommendations on them. And uh, the purpose was that we wanted to get it back to the council, and uh, it was only to provide, the, the bulk of the report really is providing information about the costs um, and some things that could be done to improve the uh, charge. We didn't, uh, for any, um, or any new policy on housing, we didn't want to leave that to the Finance Committee, we want that in another committee. Um, similarly, with the ad hoc um, art, um, it was a financial analysis. It was not a policy issue for us. And I think that it needs to remain that way. I am working very hard to make sure, as, as chair, that we stay with that. Um, but if you think that there's a way to word the charge, um, to uh, solidify it, I, I can understand the point you're making. Manny? So I'm concerned about this change because um, we've talked about in this committee the potential for um, a change like this, is, and this is how I read it, um, allowing the Finance Committee to really speculate on hypotheticals. Um, you know, when it says investigate revisions, policies, or other initiatives, that's, it, that's pretty much everything under council consideration. Um, revision, by, bylaw revisions, policies, or other initiatives, that's everything under council consideration to determine whether it will affect town revenues, expenses, or finances. So mm -hmm. if we go back to mm -hmm. the example that Evan has used many times, which is the SRO example, and um, what residents were bringing to the council as arguments of, well, has it been investigated that we're gonna need a traffic light for people to turn in and out, or new sidewalks, or a new crosswalk, and who's gonna pay for that, and new lighting on the street, and who's gonna pay for it, and, and adding this bullet point sends all of that for everything the council considers and all of those hypotheticals to finance under the way this is written. And that, I, you know, I, there's merits to looking at a bylaw change or looking at a climate action goal and a policy under the climate action goal or plan and saying, this is gonna have a huge effect on our revenues. Um, there's merits to that up to a point, but beyond that point, saying, well, it, we might have to add a light and that could be negative. That to me goes, that's too in the weeds about the financial impact. As Evan was saying, it's an economic versus an actual yeah. financial issue. Um, everything the council does has the potential to have an economic impact in town. Um, that doesn't mean we need the finance committee to consider everything the financial does the, the council does right. and make a report on that potential economic impact versus um, non-hypothetical 
impacts to town finances. Um, I, I'll give another example, as, as Andy did, the housing policy that said 50 units every year of affordable housing and a maximum of $50,000 per unit in subsidy of town finances. That's got a more direct impact on town finances that I think it's appropriate for the Finance Committee to take a review of that and say, hey, that 12 million we can't absorb or we can absorb and this is how we can versus that hypothetical on the SRO side of, well, it might increase traffic which may or may not do this and may or may not. And I don't know how to limit that, but I think this bullet point opens it up to everything for everything the council does, and I'm really hesitant to support that. The word will as opposed to might is a uh, deliberate choice. Mm -hmm. The only other thing you could do, and I'm not going to uh, opine about it today, is to put it upon request of the council investigate. That was uh, actually going to be my suggestion, mm -hmm. that I think I'd be more comfortable if the mm -hmm. council, instead of everything having to go to finance right. because it's so broad, mm -hmm. saying, you know, this one's got enough of a mm -hmm. concern that mm -hmm. we maybe need finance looking at it versus no, that's not, yeah. and so maybe upon request of the council would make me feel a little more comfortable, I think. Evan? Yeah, I think that makes sense because when we do referrals, sometimes we just do referrals and say, oh, it's referred to that committee, and sometimes we sort of put some stipulations on it, this is what we're looking for back, and that can help. Because I think, again, it, my concern has been a little bit of Mandy's concern and I've been very pleased with how the finance community has operated. Um, but of course, it's always up to whoever is chair and how they, uh, so if we lose Andy as chair at some point in the future, uh, we might not know how a new chair would interpret that. So I think, I think having that upon request um, could help set some parameters and the council might choose not to set parameters for any given referral, but then they might if there is um, concern. Because I do think that the bylaws do need to be, it, like, I don't want to not include this, but I, I understand Mandy's concern and I have shared it, so I, I would support that. I'm getting the feeling that in spite of my wishes, um, we are not going to be ready to make a decision on this charge this morning, today. Can I bring up one other thing? Sure, Andy. Andy put, we had another document from Councillor Steinberg. Yes, the, we do. His, his track changes That's to right. a proposed charge. Right. Um, one of them was something we missed when we transferred to a new document, which is the appointing authority. Um, that really does need to read right. town council yes. president for voting members, exactly. town council for non-voting members. Um, that we yeah. missed that yes. change, and yes. so I, and I, I think made, right. we need to add that into this charge. So what I'm gonna suggest is that um, We'll give Councilor Steinberg a chance to respond to the suggestions you both made about that slight change and see if he's amenable to that or if he wants to think about it. But he has given us a number of other comments, one of which Mandy's pointed out. Um, and what I would like to see is that, we're not gonna do this today, I don't think. Um, we're gonna have to uh, go through and make some changes. Evan, would you be willing to do that for this particular charge since it's, in other words, you would be making, uh, you can say no. But uh, or Mandy, I, I've got him in the document. You've got him. So Mandy's willing to take it on if you're. If, thank you, Mandy. Evan says thank you, Mandy. Um, so you would produce a document that would incorporate the uh, suggestions that uh, Councilor Steinberg has made. Um, Andy, do you want to say anything to, and you don't have to, to the idea of upon, how do we phrase it, upon request of the council? Did you want to say anything to that? No, I think uh, it's easier for at this point to just let Mandy uh, do a draft and say maybe the uh, appropriate thing to do would be at uh, the next round of meetings because I assume that you're, 
you're regularly meeting the Wednesday after that's what council it, meetings. The, yes, that's correct. And we were meeting at the Finance Committee the Tuesday after. So if Mandy had a draft and it was permitted to send it to the Finance Committee for the 11th and then um, we reported back to you so that you have a report back on the 12th and I just would take Mandy's draft and say, is, do you have any comments on this? And if the committee has no comments, then um, right. you're set. You're if set they have comments, you can consider them and deal with them. The only concern I have, it's a very small one, is that um, we now have a committee that is uh, uh, charged with doing something that's not actually in its charge. Um, so I think we hopefully can live with that for uh, at least the two audit more weeks. I'm sorry? Piece, the audit yeah, the piece. audit piece. Yeah, that's kind <coughs> of why I was trying to get this done today. Um, I was hoping to have it done, obviously, when we presented it to the council on Monday. Um, that didn't happen. Um, anyway, that's just that I don't know if that's, I should worry about it. Um, yeah. I'll worry I, about it. Nobody <coughs> else will worry about it. So good. Yeah, I probably need to um, yes. talk with Pat about this separately. Um, but when uh, I was just meeting with uh, Paul and Sonia upstairs while you were having your meeting down here. Um, we were separating out the audit functions for the FY19 audit, which is the year that ended um, June 30th. And um, that will need to be scheduled to meet, they will be need to schedule a meeting with the finance committee as the audit committee sometime um, probably in uh, March. And uh, the uh, bidding functions and the hiring functions for the FY20 and 21 audit, we talked about that, but they're not gonna have anything that's gonna come up over the next couple of weeks. All right, um, well, thank you very much for coming and um, Mandy will be um, forwarding to you the revisions for your committee's review. And if you could get those back to us um, before our meeting on the, on the uh, 12th, that would be great. Um, it looks like we will not be presenting this particular charge uh, at any earlier than February 24th to the council. Um, and we're not gonna make the February 10th uh, date, which is, I think we can live with that. We have some other things we can give them and uh, so thank you, Andy. Yeah, okay. thank you. Um, so we are over time, I understand that. I'm gonna try to bring us to conclusion. I have a meeting at one o'clock I do have to be at. Um, I don't wanna keep this any longer. That's painful for me because I was very much looking forward to item number six. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. At the council meeting, I really did struggle to understand where people were coming from. And I know they're coming, at least I think some of them are coming from a, a thoughtful place, um, but I had trouble grasping it and we're not gonna have a chance to talk about that today, but it's something that we are, uh, I, I believe, still continuing to try and hammer out, which is uh, what would be the proper process for public ways requests. Um, and so that's just gonna have to go by the boards today. We do not have public presence, so there is no need for public comment. I'm gonna pass on the minutes for today. We have them, thanks to Athena, but I'm gonna leave them in the packet and we'll deal with them next time. Um, discussion of future agenda items, uh, we're gonna pass over because it really is actually item number 10. And again, I'm just gonna point out that I put in the packet at the last minute, uh, last night, um, what I understood to be uh, everything that's been sent to us by the council. And at some point, um, it'd be helpful perhaps for those of you uh, to look at it, particularly those of you who served on the bylaw review committee um, and make sure that that is actually accurate. And also, um, in one case, I think I didn't actually have the bylaw reference um, in, the, in what I had in front of me. So anyway, we have a, a, a number of things have been given to us, and I was hoping today, but I don't think we have time, to sort of decide how we're going to proceed uh, to deal with this over the next couple of uh, weeks or months. Um, we have some deadlines. March 9th apparently is a, apparently a very sacred and important date um, that we are supposed to uh, at least give something. Um, so I guess what I'm asking my committee members to do if in the free time that they have is to give some thought to how they would think we should proceed in dealing with um, what is, seems to be a fairly substantial amount of, of work, um, which we look forward to, that's why we exist, but there are a couple of items that um, have a timestamp on them 
and so maybe starting with those. And um, I'm blessed by the fact that at the moment, at least I have two members from the Dialogue Review Committee on this body, and that will make this work, I think, much, much easier. So I'm, I'm a little less worried um, when I think about that. So um, that's where we, any uh, things that you would, yeah, Evan. So one of, I was thinking about this this morning, and one of the things I'm willing to offer, although if Pat wants to do this, um, I'd also very happily cede it to her. Um, but considering that uh, we worked on the bylaw review committee, considering that it's still somewhat fresh in our minds, um, I was thinking I would be happy to do sort of a look through the future considerations document mm -hmm. and maybe come forth with some suggestions about here are the things that will be really easy to fix and maybe we can just bang out and then here are the things that would, that would take much longer and then here are the things that maybe we shouldn't even consider we should send to one of the other um, committees mm -hmm. um, because I think our, our task was to develop a timeline to develop a work plan, yeah. whatever that means. Right. Um, but I think maybe ranking them in terms of priority and mm -hmm. also uh, how complex they right. are might right. be a good right. first step that I would be happy to that take on unless helpful. Pat wants to do it. No, I think you're happy all right, so Pat is happy, and that's important. Um, and Ev Evan is um, is willing to do this, and I think that's something that you could put in the packet um, at any time between now and our next meeting, if you could, to give us a chance to look at it. Um, we will be presenting at least two, a couple of documents to the council on February 10th um, from this body. Um, Mandy, my understanding is you're going to work up the finance committee charge, um, and um, we did, that, and that should be it, right? In other words, that's the only charge that, that, that um, what am I missing here? Anybody? The three other charges we haven't voted on. Right, the, the three other charges being, I'm sorry? TSO, CRC, and yeah, that, I think GOL. We, yeah, I think we will vote on, the, my understanding is we will vote on those when we are finally satisfied that we have a proposal that we can bring forward to the council um, uh, as sort of a next phase, phase two. Um, and I would like to believe that we would have some kind of report that would, uh, with your help, that would articulate the rationale. And in addition, would be uh, included in that would be the revised charges for those committees. So I'm not as much worried about those right now as just if we can get to the point where we feel we have a pretty clear sense of what we want to propose to the council. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a major chunk of what we're doing next time. Um, Evan would give us a, a sense of where we stand with the bylaw. Uh, revisions, uh, the future considerations. We would have your um, document from the Finance Committee that hopefully we could we could move on. And then I would hope to get to the issue of, of the uh, public process for um, uh, the process for public ways request. Mandy. So um, one other thing that's coming to this committee by automatic referral yeah. in the next couple days because both other committees have finished it is the percent for art bylaw for GOL's review for clarity consistency actionability so that um, CRC voted finally today and my understanding from a report from Andy is that Andy voted that finance voted finally on the recommendations to the council so its next review is in this committee automatically uh, okay um, and It'll be interesting to see how that goes because that's, um, yeah. Okay. Evan, please. Sorry. He's calling it himself. Folks. I was. This I was. Is not a good sign. <laughs> I was taking notes, so I may, I may have missed this, but future agenda items. Um, yes. The amendment to the open containers okay. bylaw, which was referred to us last night. I mean, right, night. That, that's on my list. Okay, it wasn't. It, it's on there, sure. and, right. and, but there's where I could use advice as to, you, you're suggesting that's something we might want to get on right away. Yeah. Anyway, but that's something you can. I have a bias yeah, I understand, <laughs> in I wanting it to well, be done. Well, that's one of the advantages of being on this committee. <laughs> you, get, you get to maybe see your biases realized, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. So good. Um, so if you would get a chance to look at that document, um, it's, it's in your packet now. And, and, and maybe even suggest revisions to it or anything that's missing. Um, and um, Evan, your report would be very valuable. Um, anyone else uh, looking for something to do? No? Okay. Um, so I'm going to adjourn this meeting at 
what time is it? Uh, 12.52 p.m. And again, with expression of thanks to my colleagues and to our council clerk who has been patient with us this afternoon. See you all in two weeks.